Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron for the New Order as the Anarchist. Let us continue on for the last night off. So yeah, we can deploy these units. But I, I just don't think we want to right now. You are missing a handful of battle tanks, but I think that's actually fine. We're going to deploy you guys regardless. Send you to the front lines. What are we missing? Outdate. Oh, we're making outdated equipment. Right, yeah, we don't need these old rifles. Let's make the AKM. Get those guys up and running. Because again, we have, we have so many guns. We have an absurd amount of guns. We actually have, we have five factories for construction. Holy shit. Nobody, nobody in the history of forever could have possibly seen this coming. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Our troops are in position. I don't know where your entire army is. I'm assuming you are on the border with the Japanese. Also, National Pacification Army is now at war with the entirety of the Co-Prosperity Sphere. You definitely know enough troops to fight them all off, though, so I have no idea what your plan is. I mean, you're just going to get killed, right? You actually have no troops. A lot of these guys actually don't have any units. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Again, Vietnam is currently led by Ho Chi Minh. The National Pacification Army is going to get absolutely destroyed. Zimbabwe is clearing people. Yeah, but you, uh, you can all go to war. That's fine. So Zimbabwe is at war with you. I don't know why, but, you know, you want to fight out, out amongst yourselves? That's completely acceptable. So you're now the Kingdom of England and Wales. Will you try to form all of your territory again? It's not impossible. What are you doing? The rest of Scandinavia. The Russian threat. Will you try to take over all of um, all the north? I mean, it looks like Norway is having a little bit of a rebellion. France has sided with the Italians. Yeah, which actually means that they're not part of OFN as well. So anybody that sides with the Italians is actually really in proxy actually allying themselves with the United States. Who are you guys? The Southern Euro United Defense League. So you guys have joined a little faction. I don't know if you're going to become one country in the future, but we'll see. Yeah, like that's a weird thing. It's like you're all fascist. Also, I still like how Africa Shield is just this little guy right there. Because their whole country just basically collapsed. Like, I wouldn't mind join, joining the OFN. Maybe, maybe at some point in the future. But I don't think we can really... I mean, how many troops does, does Germany have? 67... I mean, actually, not that many. Significantly less than I would have thought. So we have 27,000 manpower. We've inspired progressive thought. After that, let's go for... I mean, we only have like a handful of things we can even choose at this point. So let's reorganize the industrial centers. What does the status say? Teaching was a natural calling to Nikolai. Many were, uh, many were in it for the stat. Many were in it for the status, or because their fathers had been teaching for them, and their fathers were them. In the days of the czar, some moaned and groaned that they got the privilege of being forced into it by their affluent parents. Imagine that today: a Russian fighting a cursor because he had to get an education. Most would kill a man just to know how to read. That was precisely the reason Nikolai did what he did, because he found people and their unending quest for knowledge fascinating. Even the most brutish uh, Black Army soldier had questions. That's what kept them humid, even as they gunned down their enemies. When a General Assembly made a general call for teachers or for those willing to become them, Nikolai rushed the answer, which is precisely how he ended up in Kansk. The city transform transformed from the beating heart of the territory to just another city. Nikolai found out the prospect of the city of a revolution being lost in the history, a terrifying one, and noted he... Uh, he ought to make it one of the major subjects of the daily lesson. Mr. Zolin, his pupils cried as they entered the room. The humble teacher wasted no time getting into the lesson, picking up a chalk and drawing a hammer and sickle on the board. The hammer and sickle. The symbol not only of not only Bukharan, but of Yogata. Separately, these tools mean nothing, but when they are put together, what do they represent? They show the common man, the tools of the worker, united. This sounds on a surface level like something we ought to rally behind. However, Nikolai paused for dramatic effects, prompting his students to look up at their notes and admit and met eyes with their instructor. This is a prime example of what we must be most aware of. The state will wear many clothes to try and trick you into becoming their puppet. There's only one symbol that represents freedom, and that is the people hand in hand, nothing else. Teach them well, and, and all will be well. We do have um, some political power here, which we can use 
Estimate land from progress. 50% monthly population for 45 days. We'll slightly decrease scoring time. You know what? That could be useful in the future. Once we want to annex more and more territory from the Soviets, from Omsk, from the fascists in Western Russia. Okay, they're not fascists anymore. They're just despots. But those guys over there, we want to eventually kill all of them. And of course, we want to eventually annex these areas down here as well. I don't know when anybody really gets an opportunity to attack any of them. We'll kind of see in the future. Because you're mostly done all of your uh, trees here as well. The question is, like, will... Okay, Ukraine is once again part of the Germans. I don't know when that happened. Gartland is down here as well. Because you are a rice protectorate of Ukraine. So I guess their, uh, their little republic did not last. It's a shame for them. But on the other hand, for us, it doesn't make too much of a difference. So who has won their war? Is this for Congo? My guess is that it's for the Congo. But I actually, I don't know because nothing actually popped up. No, I have no idea then. Okay, very strange. Nothing, um... Nothing decided to make itself known, which is fine. The Gibraltar Dam has been officially finished. The huge construction and project, the Gibraltar Dam, for some, just a bottle as well, which Germany threw its resources into after the war, has finally been finished. Its long journey has brought alongside a, a large variety of issues, uh, which in its consequences affected far more nations than just the Reich. Yet the responsibility of the abandoned project fell onto the people who had been directly deal with the fallout, not just the Germans. The Iberians had to deal with the dam whilst Europe fell into economic freefall. Despite all odds, the project has now been finished and has earned the Union a considerable amount of prestige in the international community. Iberia itself is overjoyed by the news and has proclaimed it as a national victory. The Germans quickly moved to claim credit, but outside of the national socialist sphere, this has not been accepted well. Congratulations to Iberia for finishing their dam. I don't know what that really does. I mean, I'm guessing there's maybe like a straight crossing here now? I mean, that makes sense. I, I, something that could happen. How is unity here? Stable. Okay. I mean, how, how long is it going to stay stable, really, is the more important question that we got to ask ourselves. So I had to take a guess, and I would say their stability is not long for this world. So it looks like we'll probably finish all of our focuses by early 1968, which is about a year to prepare for the war. I'm just, I'm just surprised that they would um, take that long, that there'd be this huge gap in, uh, in, in terms of focus trees. Factory increases by 7.5%. Because, yeah, you we have... Well, you're a 35-day. But we have about 110 days left. Two infrastructure. I guess we'll go for you for now. Seems like an okay choice. And now we have 67 factories. What are we currently constructing? We're using seven on our factories here, which is not bad. Air bases, radar station, anti-air infrastructure. I mean, really... Like, we can't build any naval bases up here, because, again, this is not technically connected to the ocean. So we can't, we can't do anything with that. But, I mean, I don't think there's really too much else in construction that I really would care too much about. Like, a nuclear reactor? I mean, what does that do for us? Like, we're, we're never really going to be able to effectively use a nuke. I guess we can build, like, radar dishes? How, how much do you cost? You cost 3,000. We actually have enough military factory right now. Let's, let's build these radar ditches and just kind of see what they do for us. Maybe they'll give us some more information. I mean, actually, it'll, it'll tell me right here. Radar styles. Okay. Intel enemy troops in nearby states. Um, more effective radars. Better detected enemy aircraft and... And more fleets at sea. But, I mean, none of that really matters so much. You know what? Cancel all this. I, I've changed my mind immediately. We don't need that garbage. So, we're now... We can upgrade our close air support to now that they are jets. Which I would say is pretty cool for us. We can even go... We can keep going up this tree. More range. I don't think they really need. Honestly... Let's upgrade our howlitzers. Make them a little bit better for our units. Because, I mean, our enemy don't have planes. Other than Western Russia, they have aircraft. But they are 
almost like the final boss, really, because they're gonna be like the last country we actually probably fight in our quest for Russian un reunification. So I, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll upgrade our tanks a little bit as well. This so question is: Do we want to keep upgrading our tanks? Probably want to upgrade the artillery. No, no, we'll, we'll get you guys going. 64 days, not too expensive at all. So how many um, what are our units looking like? We have 20 light. Tw uh, 20 light infantry divisions, three heavy tanks, three motorized infantry, seven elite. But I think I think that's all fine. A handful of you guys are considered green. Who's wait? Who's considered green? You guys? We'll exercise you then a little bit. Just so you're not green anymore. You're going to take some attrition, but again, we have so many rifles and stuff that I'm not really worried about that at all. How much, how much population are we actually getting for our troops? So about a thousand men per month, which actually is not bad uh, whatsoever. So because we went for the Libertarian one here, we're going to go for the Lessons of the Union for our main... Um, we'll see what the Siberian plan really is and what it can actually benefit us. Think, think. Remo's office was a mess. Paper scattered all over the floor, only distinguishable by the different colors of ink on them. Maps hung from the walls, decorated with X's and check marks, as if you were a pirate hunting for a lost treasure. Ramil wasn't searching for gold pieces or long forgotten jewels. The treasure Ramil sought out was worth more than any metal. He was hunting for hope, to which he found absolutely nothing. Ramil heaved a large book off the shelf and sat it down with a thud. Why was why why would they chose him for this? He flipped through the pages looking for something, looking for his hope. Book number 480 was no different than the last. Ramil resigned to his chair and messaged his temples and massaged his temples. Was he really going to find the answer in a book? Which document outlines the difference between helping and hurting? No matter how many times he read over the plans of the Siberian plan, he couldn't decide if it was good or bad. What should the present? What sh what should be presented to the Security Council and what shouldn't? Three knocks at the door finally broke the silence. Ramil rushed to the answer. Before him was Yuri, holding two cups of coffee. It's midnight, you know. Ramil wiped his front of sleep, his eyes, and nodded. Well, let uh, let me in. I might be able to help. A long night ahead. Well, we're going to go for. What are you? We are missing nothing. Okay, fantastic. We do... We're still missing rubber. We'll get the rubber from Indonesia. That seems like an okay choice. It means we're going to be building the military factories a little bit less, but that's not a big problem. The Emperor of Manchuria has passed away. We don't need stability. We're already 100%. So Manchukio is now ruled by you. That's completely okay. Looks like you guys did beat the National Pacification Army, which is not a big surprise at all. Yeah, they just got completely destroyed. Which is not a surprise. I mean, yeah, I know our manpower is low. Are we, are we not building infantry fighting vehicles? I could have sworn we were building at least a handful. Well, we'll throw some of you guys here then. Lower tank production by two. Lower close air support a little bit like that. But you guys are still green. I mean, how many are you missing? Infantry fighting vehicles. We're not missing any. We, we had some in storage, which is fine. What do we, what do we think about like Kazakhstan though? It's just kind of sitting there tormenting me. But I could probably take over the territory without too much of an actual problem. Okay, I think you guys are Germans. You got the German flag there. But you've, you've declared like an independent German state. Which is... Have you... No, you, you changed color. It used to be like a red, now you're like a green. I'm not too sure what's happening with you. But you're kind of like an independent German state? That's gone democratic. So I guess that's something. So Germany, what is your plan? You're trying to make insurance to Sweden. Maybe you'll get Sweden to join your faction, which would not be great for us. Also, you guys are having a um, demilitarized zone. What's going on in your territory? Because you're actually a different person. The last guy, I guess, died. Looks like central authority apparently has collapsed in your territory. I mean, that works out for... Oh, fantastic. This is... Okay. Not really what I expected. And this dude is in charge of two different countries. So congratulations to him for getting such a good promotion. 
but your country is slowly starting to fall apart. You still have 27 divisions, so I mean, if you want to fight a war, you probably easily win. Yeah, but we don't want any troops up towards the north. You guys even have units? No, you don't. You actually have jack shit. Okay, you guys are no longer green, so we're going to stop training you. You guys are also no longer green. We'll stop training you as well. I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready for conflict. There, There's really no denying that. The Reconstruction Committee. So yeah, you guys have just completely fallen apart. But all your troops are now, like, here. Actually, I'm guessing a handful of them are probably up towards the north as well. But I'm thinking, now that you guys have broken apart into several smaller countries, what does that mean for us? Right? You know what I mean? Like, it, it means something. Okay, regional development, regional integration. I'm not too sure how we complete the Siberia plan. You know, it's probably just invest $350 million, and eventually we'll get has like some modifier show up. That's my best guess, at least. Since it does make sense. Uh, but we want to keep on improving our artillery. We can't actually improve them. You're 1970. You know, breakthrough on our tanks? That would be really nice. I would not say no. We do have more factories that we need. What do we, do we need to build anything? The answer is like, not really. Honestly, so let's just throw you both into uh, stuff there. Import power workers unions, or workers organizations, I should say. Popular the government will increase, which seems pretty good. Modern increase the GDP. Yeah, let's, let's improve worker training. We'll get all that going. Again, all of you on Omsk. Omsk is the one that's actually a risk. As much as it would be nice to kill these other guys, they don't matter as much. Oh, you're actually also independent. You're just regular old Omsk. You guys are still an ultra-nationalist up here. You are a puppet state. We'll see how that kind of plays out in the future. From the rat's eyes. Fyodor kept his head low as he scurried around the marketplace. His pockets jingled with every hurried step. So many it turned out today, which was a good and a bad thing. On one hand, many new potential avenues of revenue, as he liked to call them, opened up. On the other hand, it did mean that he had a much higher chance of getting caught, and the people's justice was not likely to grant clemency to a thief, no matter how young he was. Fyodor swam upstream against the current of bodies, mumbling less than half-heartedly apologies as he shrugged against the general direction of the crowd. Jesus, he thought. What would drive this many people out here? He was plundering the city square bit by bit for years now, and he could assure that uh, assure the people here that this town held no good worth coming out. I don't, I'm gonna read that sentence again. He had plundered the city square bit by bit for years now, and could assure the people here that this town held no good worth coming out here for. Fyodor ducked into the alley, desperate to avoid the suffocating power of the sea of people. He peed his head out from a hiding spot just to cut enough to see the people's destination. A loud cr crowd. Uh, had amassed around the city foundation, around the figure who stood atop a pedestal of boxes. Fyodor, usually calculating his every decision, allowed his curiosity to control him, slinking out towards the speaker. As he got closer, he could make out what the man was saying, something about the Siberian plan being fascist, but that didn't matter as much as the growing number of armed men, the band on their arms signifying their allegiance to the Black Army. The two groups had, um, began shouting at each other, demanding an end to the authoritarian direction of the free territory's economy. Fyodor, standing amongst the huddled mess, saw the conflict brewing, and between the, t uh, the two, quickly turned to make his escape, but not before slipping his hands into a few coat pockets. They wouldn't mind, right? What's less authoritarian than giving away your own belongings to the needy? The Siberian plan is a necessary evil. So we lose 10% war sport, we're losing 50% stability, losing 100 political power, and we're getting a little bit of authoritarian socialism, which is not so bad. I mean, we're still at 6% for the libertarians, so we're, I'm still have no real... I don't think there's any real risk of the um, Black Army kind of cooing us. I think, at least. I hope that one decision doesn't completely screw us over for the rest of the campaign. But I, I, I think we're fine. As far as I'm aware. I think. Fingers crossed on that one. We're on negative 92 political power. Not much we can do about that at this exact moment. 
I mean, I guess we'll go for more tanks. So we're trying to upgrade the tanks that we do have. Make them as good as they possibly can be. I'm also going to increase your line ever so slightly upwards like that. Because there are some red army troops. There probably are some red army troops like way up towards the north as well. So the Coxes are declaring wars on people. I guess they're now trying to get independent. The Great Cock is revolt. So we have the Social Democrats. We got fascists against the Nazis. We'll kind of see how that all ends up playing out. How's Scotland doing, by the way? Are you still a despotic? Yeah, you are. Which is not a huge surprise. So what are you, you going to do, Italy? It's a great question. Heart of the Reich. I mean, can you attack Germany? I'm actually not too sure. I would lean more towards no. But I, I think Germany and Italy do still play their um, their great game. Yeah, we're at negative 87 political power. This is our final, as far as I'm aware, this is the final thing we actually have here. It'll be done just slightly one year before we can actually attack anybody. It yeah, looks like you guys have defeated Social Democrats. I'm assuming you're probably going to defeat the Legionaries as well, because it's 3 against 11. Which are, are not great odds, I would say, for the guy with less troops. Uh, yeah, let's definitely go for Breakthrough. 78 days on you is not so bad. Omsk has a lot of troops defending its territory. So the war, I think, is getting significantly more dangerous. Which is definitely not what we want. It's like, what are you doing? I think you got all your old um, decisions from before. Okay, we've got a resource slot available. Let's increase our artillery. Just increase our, um, our ability to fight the enemy as much as we possibly can before the war actually begins. And it looks like, yeah. The Coxes were able to defeat their enemies pretty easily. I, I don't think that's really a surprise to anybody whatsoever. Okay, so we're at negative 78. It's going to take about 100 days-ish, if not more. Probably, actually, probably like 150 days for us to have not negative political power. And the Heirs of Babylon. Heirs of Babylon is a new... Oh, pause the game. The Heirs of Babylon is a newly released fiction book detailing the alternative universe in which the world, the Third Reich lost its struggle against the decadent capitalist West and the Mongol states of Russia. After our beloved Fuhrer was cut down by a bullet in 1935, written by Cornish author Antion Beaver, Heirs of Babylon details the lives of people living in a divided Berlin, Londinium, Alexandria, and Philadelphia, the new capital of the Americas. Much of the world is divided between the Imperial Dominion of Britannia, who had reclaimed her traditional thrones in Germany and France, the United American Federation, whose border stretches from the North Pole to the South Pole, and the insidious Pan-Eurasian Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Fern Ferdinand Federland is an investigator, the Britannic uh, detective is licensed to kill and beholden only to her uh, Britannic Majesty. Shooting for his wife in Red Europe, he is swept up in a world-shaking plot to Berlin. The chase takes him to America, France, Africa, and finds to Gibraltar in a series of daring escapes and high-speed gun battles. The crux of the novel's event is the Gibraltar missile crisis, a tense nuclear standoff between the Dominion and the Pan-Eurasian Union. While the United Federation seeks to undermine both sides and provoke a war for their own purposes. The novel ends in uncertainty, with tanks massing across the Gibraltar border and the American fleet refusing to answer hails circling like vultures. Will Ferdinand use the Dominion's most powerful weapons? Will he rescue the woman he loves? What childish fantasy. But I think that for right now is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks for watching. My name is Anselm. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. If not, enjoy, click thumbs down. If you want to subscribe, and goodbye.